Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum. In today's episode of Monday Morning Musings with JR from Horror Fiend TV, we are talking our favorite horror show from this year, specifically, 2022. Oh, there's so many, so many options, too. This is just like movies has been a great year for horror. If you're a horror fan, you got to yeah. love the way 2020 has been. Yeah, across the board. Shows, movies, some books I've read, some shorts. It's been a busy year for 2022, horror. 2022, the year of horror. Making a comeback. Forget everything else. That's Drama. crazy. Yeah. So, I guess I'll go first this time. So, my pick for this year is the uh, Amazon Prime show from... Um. It's, uh, I don't know, I guess like it's one of those um, small town. It reminds me of like so many things, but essentially it's the story of these people who end up in this town and they, they can't leave and they don't know why. Um, and essentially like on top of that, it's kind of like a, um, I guess like a creature feature, but we don't know. Like This is the one time I think when it comes to something like a TV show specifically, because it's open-ended that I was like, cool with the, with how little we actually learn because you all, you don't really learn very much. You learn a few things here or there. Um, and you get a couple of questions answered, but at the end of the first season, like you walk away, like you still don't know anything. And I, for whatever reason, the way that they pace the show, the way they storytell and the fact that thank God it got renewed for a second season. Like I was yes. okay with that, but it has, um, it has some really great acting in it. Um, I liked the story. I liked how vague it was. It's pretty gruesome in some parts and it didn't take too long to really like jump into like kind of the crazy, you know, all the crazy stuff that's going on in the town. Yeah. So um, I just was, I, I really loved it. I think I watched it over the course of a couple of days. Nice. I really liked it a lot. I, um, shows are hard for me because they're such a time suck, but, um, this one was definitely worth it. So my pick was from. No, it's a, it's a very good show. Um, you're right on all your points. Um, the thing I like about it too is, you know, once you start watching, you, you try to wonder why is the sheriff walking around ringing a bell to make sure everybody goes home. So right off the bat, you hit with this mystery and just a, like once again, the environment. The environment plays such a factor in horror movies. And if you have a great environment, it adds to it. it this town looks like it's beat, run down, and then you have this happen. And yeah, it's it's a lot, a lot of great things about that, that show. It's also like a drama. There's a lot of like... Um like emotional stuff, not just from backstories, but like current relationship things, things that happen that like are now. And then on top of the stories about these people that we learn of all these, these things that everybody has been through, people they've lost, like what they've seen, what they've experienced. Yeah. Like I just, um, I was like super emotionally invested in pretty much, pretty much everything um, except the teenage daughter. But other than that, um, yeah, I thought it was a really good show. It's really well rounded for a horror show, and yeah. I am so glad that it was not on Netflix because I swear I feel like we wouldn't get, be getting a second season if it had been. Um, but it's really good. Well, I, like I think it. you know what helps the series too is the fact that even the supporting characters play a role, and there's not too many series where the supporting characters are basically play an important role because majority of the time they're just they're just actors waiting to get killed off, but. You know, it kind of reminded me, still reminded me too, is like um, the house that they sit, sit in on top of the um, the hill. That was the community, right? Yeah. When you have certain scenes of what's haunting this town at night, it kind of gave me like a little bit like a Salem's Lot feel to it. Yes. Which I kind of liked it. I was like, all right, they're doing the Salem's Lot thing to this. But yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah. the fact that, and they don't tell you, even after the first season, they don't tell you what it is that comes at the after them at night, which I love because it makes you look forward to the second season. It's like, what are these people and who are they? Why do they keep coming back? And and what's their role in there? And there's one guy there who has a Joker smile. <laughs> Remember oh, him? yeah. I got that. That dude's character was creepy as hell. <laughs> but no, they're definitely a great series. I'm glad that they renewed it for sure. Yeah. No, I really liked it a lot. I think, um, and it's one of the, uh, like, 
Another thing it did that was kind of surprising is as many characters as there are, I don't feel like you get lost. Like, no. I don't feel like, like, there's there's a lot. There's a lot of characters. But I never felt like there was too many, you know? Like, sometimes when you have something like that and it, and you're and you're trying to learn all of these things and keep up with what's going on and it's super vague and, and mysterious and whatever and they have this many characters, it can become like, like, did you ever watch the series The Mist? Yes. So it was kind of like that. There's like way too many people <laughs> to like keep up with, but this, for whatever reason, like they just, I don't know if it's pacing <clears throat> the way they choose to storytell or what, but it worked really well. Well, you know what? They don't, they didn't do what a lot of series do where they, they linger on characters to try to explain their backstories, show what they're doing. So basically they'll give you the quick snippet of what the character is going through now. All right, let's move to the next one. They don't linger, yeah. which is, which is a, a rare thing these days as far as series go yeah yeah so what's uh what's yours me i'll tell you it was it was hard to pick which one because you had so many great series i mean netflix is netflix is a double-edged sword because you get hooked on the series with the expectation all right you might not see them for <laughs> for another season but i don't know like continuing this um this international i mean yeah, I was gonna pick international, but the Asian market right now is just—they're just pulling some great stuff out. I mean, I didn't watch it, you know, coming off the whole like thing of Squid Games. Mm -hmm. It was just a massive tidal wave, and here comes all of us are dead. Twenty twenty two, it's a Korean zombie series. Um, I got to. I, I'm not huge on zombies, but this one hooked me right from the get-go. This is like the third episode, I think, where you've talked where you've picked a zombie something as your favorite. Yeah, is it the third? I think it's like the third. Who was the other one? Oh, it was sadness. But see, this is the Asian market. They just I don't know what it is. They <laughs> just they just you know what they know how to do it right. You know, and, and I think what I liked about the series was yes, it took place in, in a high school. But mm -hmm. I felt like everything that happened to these kids, one, you could either empathize for them. Two, you could kind of get pissed off with them. And three is like, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like all the deaths had meaning behind them. It wasn't just, all right, let's kill this person off just to kill them all. There was, there was meaning behind each one. And they had that whole twist mm -hmm. where not everybody who becomes a zombie goes full zombie. Mm -hmm. I thought that was totally different. Yeah, a different take on a type of immunity. Yeah. And like, a, not full immunity, like, but, yeah. And also the cause. I mean, the cause of what happened, what causes zombie apocalypse was just so different because, mm -hmm. I mean, I won't, I, I mean, I want people to watch the films. I'm not going to go, I mean, the series, I'm not going to spoil it for them. But, yeah, definitely the way it started and how it hit the school and basically the city, yeah, it was so different. I think that's why I like so much about the just the, the Asian market right now. It's like they have different takes on how to, you know, there was what, that other series on Netflix, uh, the movie, Hashtag Alive. I love that movie. I mean, that came out last year. Yeah, they they just have a way of doing it that you you get hooked on they put the, but it, they and it's the not scenario. just the zombies, though. It's the stories. Like, yes. their stories are just better. Yes. Like, Ours is uh, like the same shit over and over. We all start out in this one place. We meet a bunch of random people. People die. We move to another place where we meet a yeah. couple more random people. More people die. And then we move to another place. Like there's never like, but they actually have like stories and different perspectives and yes. reasons and twist. And it, that's, that's a lot of what makes it better. Yeah. They don't stick to the same characters. I mean, the characters they have in, in the series, you, I mean, you have your typical, you know, your your popular kids, your sports, you know, athletes. You have your nerds. You have your bullies. the bullies, which I I like the bully in this one. He's an a hole, but he's a he's a good character as far as a villain to carry on to the the, the next season. As was well the other girl it was the popular girl who basically wanted everybody to do everything she wants to because she was rich and she was high class and everybody was below her. So, yeah, you have all these typical high school characters, but it's just, yeah, the, the story was good. The zombie turning was good. The 
I mean, they never hold back when it comes to zombie attacks, which, yeah, I mean, all of us are dead. 2022 is a great, great series. Yeah, I agree. That one was really good, too. And you get hooked quick. Like, I'm glad to have it in the end of the season. I'm just, I so liked happy. it. I liked it, but I didn't like it for most of the same reasons that you did. Like, I thought there was a lot of characters that didn't need to exist. And I didn't care about most of their deaths. One death in particular it? really got me, but it wasn't one of the kids. It was an adult. And um, and I think, like, uh, but otherwise, like, I, I liked it a lot. I liked most of the, like, our main, 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 main characters. Um, I liked the the twist with not being fully immune. Yeah. Um I liked the concept of the bully as a villain. I thought that was good because most of the time, like, oh, that's a spoiler. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. I'll say it after. But um, like, I, I did like, I liked his character. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I like that one too. I, I, Tasha and I did an entire episode on that one because we both really liked it too. It was oh, good. It's, it's very good. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, how, how they pull these shows out, because this is, yeah, all of us are dead, and they had that hashtag live movie, then they had uh, The Sadness, then there's another one on Netflix, which is uh, two seasons in, it's called The Kingdom, which I, I spoke about before, where it's another zombie, but during feudal times in Japan, which, you know, once again, it's like there's other stories besides, uh, oh, here's zombies outside, which, uh, you know, I like that take. And I agree with you. It's like, here's, here, the, yeah, let's move to this location. All right. I don't think there's anything around. Let's start a community here. Like, they're never going to show up. I mean, zombies keep And then we have to outside. leave everything behind. And it's always because someone is reckless. Yes. And it's, it's always like the same archetypes of dumbass people. If there's a zombie apocalypse and I meet any of these archetypes in real life, they're on their own. Yeah. Because, they, I mean, it's always something stupid. I mean, the, and the, not sound like a, a broken record, but like The Walking Dead is super guilty of that. Like, that's the entire story. Live somewhere until things get fucked up. Live somewhere until things get fucked up. Live somewhere until yeah. things get fucked up. Most of the time, it's Carl's fault. <laughs> like... Oh, by the way, let's bring a character everybody thought was dead back. Let's see how many times we could pull that off. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry, too. Rick. <laughs> Rick's going to kill me. <laughs> and Joe. He made it through me talking about it as my least favorite and didn't unsubscribe. So I think, at least I don't think he did. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's going to enjoy this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, no, I really liked All of Us Are Dead, too. I, um, I thought the ending was a little cheesy. Yeah. Because I, I also wanted the, how can I say this? I really wanted the person that lit the fire to be someone else. Like, really bad. And so when it wasn't this other person, I was like, it's disappointed. And then it was cheesy on top of that. Well, I think that one twist, which I'll try to see how I do without spoiling it, is the person who was the cause, you mm-hmm. expect him to be the savior. And the fact that they got rid of him. So early, you're like, holy crap, if they did that, which I kind of liked that a lot. The fact that the one person who could be the savior, no, nah, we're just going to, we're going to kill them off, make sure everybody's screwed. <laughs> like a shark tail. Dun, 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 dun. He, uh, he's trying to get near my laptop because it's hot. Are you situated now? He also hasn't left me alone since I got back from West Virginia. Um, anyway, yeah, I, uh. I like I like when movies take things that you find comfort in and then pull the rug out from under your feet. Like when they killed Drew Barrymore in Scream. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. When you yeah. the least the least character you expect to get killed off gets killed off. Yeah, the biggest name in that film. <laughs> like at that well, at that time. Um Yeah. So that's our favorite show for twenty twenty two. You watch them better and then from last year watch chapel weight and midnight mass and brand new cherry flavor there's a lot to <laughs> I liked last year too um 
yeah, we don't know what we're doing next, but we'll be back in two more weeks with another Monday morning meeting. Take your coffee, watch some horror. More coming your way. Yeah. I need some eggs and bacon. Eggs and bacon? I can't eat anything like that when I first get up. No, me neither. Coffee's it. Next Which coffee. really isn't good either, but. Maybe like a toast. Toast works. Kind of like this kitchen too. The breasts are using it. It's <laughs> 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 so silly. <laughs> Oh, anyway. Well, hope you guys enjoy your Monday. Have a good rest of your week, and we will see you in the next one. Peace out. I'm going. <laughs>